So today we're going to be reglazing the small timber window for our tiny house. So with, with this window, um, we just had one broken pane just here. All the others are fine. The putty's in pretty good nick, so we're just going to leave those. Um, so I wasn't, to start with, I wasn't trying to save this piece of glass, it was already pretty much gone, so I didn't have to worry about being too careful with that. Um, so I've tried a few different techniques, um, I'm just going to take you through what I think um, is the best way of doing it for, for this situation anyway. As you can see I've, already, I've done these three sides and I've just left this, this last bit of putty and there's a little bit of glass in there as well. So the first step I did was just clamp uh, the window to the workbench um, for safety reasons and so you can pull against the window when you're scraping it out. Um, so as you can see with this putty, I've seen other people do it and this putty is almost just totally deteriorated and just chipping away and you can almost pretty much scrape it away. As you can see with this, it is rock hard, so it is an absolute nightmare to try to chisel that away and bang it away. So, good old internet tells you to use a heat gun. Um, so this putty, um, if you warm it up, it softens. So we've just got a um, standard sort of heat heat gun here, and it's just a case of. Just applying the heat um, to the area that you want to heat up and just sort of keep it moving. Um, I have read that you don't want to get this too hot, you could risk um, cracking this piece of glass over here for example with the heat transfer. So Okay, that's pretty hot to the touch now. So I found if you get a sharp chisel and see now how that's just sort of coming out a lot better, getting that pretty close to the timber and just sliding down carefully. I found you can't really, you don't want to dig into the timber like I just have there a bit, otherwise you start gouging that out, which is not what you want to do. Now once you've done that first path, um, you've pierced the putty, so heating it sort of seems to work a bit better now. So you can see when I'm using the chisel, I've stopped um, this approach, or this approach, because if you do that, um, I just find that you tend to just, no matter what you do, you just tend to gouge into the wood and take too much out. So I'm, I'm just using, instead of using this edge, using this edge of the chisel and just pulling and pushing to scrape it. So then that way it's you slowly eat away at it and you get a nice smooth finish down to the wood. Uh, this edge here you can use at the same time just to scrape that last bit of putty that's on the inside of where the glass was as well. Then you get a nice uh, clean sort of 90 degree. So as you're digging away you'll most likely hit something uh, quite hard. Uh, this is called a glazing point. Uh, it's a piece of metal spike that holds the glass down that's banged in after it's set. Um, you want to remove this so you can finish your clean up, pair of pliers and just pull that out as you can see there um, and you can reuse these so put them in a safe place. So there you have it, all cleaned up, uh, ready to apply a new pane of glass. So 
So our next step now is to prime the exposed uh, timber. Um, looking this up, there's a bit of contention whether to prime it or not, whether to use oil base, whether to use linseed. It's all up for debate. Uh, this glazing compound that I'm using um, does specify that all bare timber should be primed. So I'm going to prime it. It seems to make sense to seal the timber up. And we'll see how long it lasts. And if it doesn't work, we can try another method. Um, so I'm, I'm using just a water-based primer. Mainly because this is what I've got lying around. So we'll see how that goes. Um, I suppose the key to applying any primer or sealer is just to make sure you get it into all the little nooks and crannies. So there you have it, all primed up, ready to go. Let that dry overnight. So what I've done there is um, adhere some putty uh, to this rebate first of all and then drop the glass in. So now you can see through the glass is a nice seal. So to get the putty malleable you need to warm it up a bit. And it's a bit like Play-Doh. Uh, there's a number of different techniques here, like for anything. So I'm going to try a few different approaches and see which one I like. Uh, the first one I've seen is the what we'll call the sausage method. So you roll that out into a sausage and drop it in like so and push it in with your fingers and hands get a pretty stiff putty knife I'm hoping this is going to be stiff enough, we'll see how we go now you want to sort of, obviously I've already got some angles to go by here, so I have marked that a bit. You can just keep your finger in there and tidy that up a bit. Right, we'll try another another method. See, this is the first time for me doing all these methods, so if I look if it looks a bit unco, it probably is. Right, now I've seen the guy feed it in. as he went along like this. I think the idea is to push it in as hard as you can so you get a nice seal there as he went. Move that. Now you come back the other way. Again, just want to get that angle right. Probably got way too much on there. That's all good. It's pretty tidy. Um, here's another method I've seen. Pushing it in with your knife like that. I 
think I quite like this method. Oh, the key here is not to over overwork it. Again, I've probably got way too much on. Yeah, a bit aggressive. Another trick I've seen, I suppose just to get it a bit smoother, is just to play a bit of mess on your knife. I suppose it just lubricates it a little bit. And just run that over again. We haven't quite got enough in this corner, so just try to tidy that up a bit. Uh, I've seen these corners done. What I'm just doing now, place the knife and just pull it out pretty fast. It does seem to give you a pretty good result. Oh, but slower might be key. And then you can get your finger in there a bit and just tidy it up. Before we get too crazy, I'll bang some putty in this corner. Yeah, I'll just try instead of using my hands, I'll just use the knife to do everything on this one. Yeah, I don't, I don't mind this method. You could use a wider knife here just to speed things up a bit also. I have done this once before, back in my university days, uh, when I had to repair our front door uh, through the night before, um, having to um, hammer it in, being in a right state. Uh, to this day I still can't remember doing that, but I knew I'd done it in the morning. So just flipping over the inside here, obviously just want to clean this up, the ooze over. 